Okay, hello there guys and welcome back to the Top Experts League. This is the group stage here between uh, Badgerfro and Mr. Yo and this will be game number three. Over to the far west of the map in the blue we have got ourselves Mr. Yo and he is playing as the Vikings of course. Would we expect anything other than the Vikings? And on the far right hand side of the map in the orange we have got Tyrant Bact aka Badgerfro aka back T or whatever you want to call him and he is also playing as the Vikings over here on the far right of the map uh, the map of course being migration and so far this series is at 2-0 to Mr. Yo and if you want high level games or top level play you have come to the right place and these are the games for you because uh, Mr. Yo is undoubtedly one of the very best players in AOC at the moment he is having a flying run and a great set of games uh, in this uh, event so far and he's also been playing incredibly well outside of uh, tournament events playing just phenomenally well so far now bad Joffre, of course we should not underestimate he is definitely up there in the top 10 for sure and he has been having his ass handed to him quite frankly so far in this series but i'm hoping that uh, bad Joffre might be able to turn it around and bring it back a little bit here as he is um certainly worthy of doing just that. So the map is Migration and we've seen a Migration game already that looked almost identical to this and that of course was between Halas and Spring just a moment ago if you're watching the stream. Um, now we saw how the Migration game between Spring and Halas was played and now we'll be able to compare how they played it to exactly how um, how the top top experts play it so it will certainly be an interesting one and i'm looking forward to seeing how this one goes will we see the standard meta game of 40 to 50 population dark age starts or will we see a fast feudal like uh, we saw from spring in the spring versus Halas series that we just watched so the fantastic thing about this of course is that these guys, well, I don't know if it's that fantastic, actually. I take that back. The, the maybe not so fantastic thing about this is that these guys stick to the meta game very well. And whilst that is good for viewing purposes, we can kind of predict a lot more... Uh, a lot more conclusively what these players are going to do. At the same time, there are a few downsides to stick sticking entirely to the meta, and that is, of course, that it can become a little bit too predictable. It can become uh, very unusual for players to take risks, and it's almost understandable. These guys at this level of play just do not want to take those risks at uh, the cost of potentially losing the game because of it. So it's all to play for here, and Badgerfro needs to make a little bit of a comeback because this is a best of seven, and first of four wins will make it through, uh, or not even make it through, they will just uh, get more points on the leaderboard. So Mr. Yo then, sticking up his dock at the back already, and Badgerfro does not have a dock up just yet, which is a little bit unfortunate for him. Um, obviously for uh, Badgerfro it's important to get, or for both of them, it's important to get that dock up fairly quickly here as the dock will provide them with those fishing ships which they need to have a nice strong economy. Uh, that strong economy mostly coming from the fishing ships of course so yeah. I'm kind of a little bit distracted at the moment, I'm watching the live stream as well just to make sure that my overlays were all correct and it seems like they were uh, working just fine so that's fantastic. I don't know if you guys like the little name plaques that come up next to the town centres. It's certainly something that I've uh, put a lot of time and effort into making work out. And something as well uh, that is something I'm working on, or not something I'm working on, something that uh, myself and Idle and other people might be working on, is a, a, a possibility to show the researches that the players are doing as the game is being played live. Uh, that would be a really awesome feature to have and we figured out a way that we think it might be possible to do but we are gonna just try and make it work and that would be really awesome if we can uh, if we can do that. So at the moment then yeah we are gonna see a, a little bit of a boom here and a, a dark age boom nevertheless. It's really uh, common to see this kind of play here from these players and but we will speed things up slightly. We'll have it on 75% speed whilst we 
uh, whilst we get through this dark age period of the game, because really, uh, these players will not be doing much at all for quite some time, other than building up, and the thing about Age of Empires is that it is a slow building game. Uh, the early game is much slower, it takes a long while to build your economy up, and then of course as the game goes on, the more micromanagement intensive and the faster uh, the faster you have to play, because obviously the more population you have, it's the same pretty much in all RTS, I guess. But the one thing about Age of Empires is that it does have a fairly slow build-up, uh, but a build-up to usually a very good climax, which is fantastic stuff. That sounds really like a, a very big innuendo there, but I promise you it was not. <laughs> So, yeah, Bad Jofro here sticking out the fishing ships on the south, and we've got Yo sticking up the fishing ships on the north. And unlike the game we just saw between Halas and Spring, both of these guys will be building those fishing ships for quite some time. That second dock for Bact already up, the second dock for Yo already up as well. And Bad Jofro, even with a third dock now on this right hand side, and like I said earlier, it is not unusual to see uh, three docks on in the dark age on migration and that is exactly why i have the speed up on this game so far so guys this stream does still have a three minute delay if you're watching on the stream now um i am looking at the chat but it is uh three minutes behind so what you're saying now if i read out something in the chat you won't hear it for another three minutes from when I read it. So I'm looking at the chat, don't you worry, but I am not really able to feed back to the, from the chat in real time at the moment. I didn't want to restart the stream, so that's, that is exactly why. So, yeah, like I say, just building up, building up, and 46 population from Bad Jofro as he goes up to the Feudal Age now. 47 population from Mr. Yo as he goes up to the Feudal Age. And it, could you imagine if Mr. Yo had gone up to a, for a fast Feudal and done a, a galley rush? I think Spring may have even been able to beat these players with that strategy he used against Halas here, because it is just so... Uh, it catches them off guard, we're not expecting it. The nice thing about this though, the nice thing about this style of play going up to the Feudal Age on 50 population is that you do end up having a longer game and the game usually does go to the Castle Age quite comfortably because Bad Geofro can nearly afford to click up to Castle already and that is, uh, you know, pretty fast considering he's at 51 population for now as well. So, we've got galleys popping out at the moment for Bad Geofro, and Mr. Yo is only a fraction of a second behind going up to the Feudal Age. Blacksmith coming up for Mr. Yo as well, and we'll see a blacksmith up for Bad Geofro, as well as a market for both of them, which is most likely to be the case. I mean, a market, blacksmith, they're the pretty standard buildings for a fast castle, though Mr. Yo does get his market up slightly faster, there's the market from Bad Geofro. It's only just coming up now. Uh, Mr. Yo will be hitting that Castle Age button a little bit faster with 10% uh, already done. And uh, Bad Geofro lagging behind slightly. Though he does have, it seems, a little bit more population. 57 for Bad Geofro compared to the 53 of Mr. Yo. Now, Bad Jofro here getting a little bit aggressive quite quickly with his galleys. He's going to be moving them up the left-hand side, trying to scout out uh, the map a little bit and spot out Mr. Yo over here. Obviously, these fishing ships are fairly unprotected, actually, as Bad Jofro will be sending more galleys over here uh, as time goes on, continuing to pump them out, continuing to send them round. And Mr. Yo, as I said, going up with a little bit of a faster castle time and delaying slightly, um... His galley production here, Bad Geofro, uh, straight up here with the galleys, and there's a transport ship from Yo. What is Yo doing with the transport? Well, he is putting in a scout cavalry for now, and he will transition, well, put that onto the center island, where the scout will, of course, do, uh, well, his main job, scouting. Why would he not be scouting on the center island? That is, of course, if Bad Geofro doesn't take down this uh, transport ship, but it looks at the moment like the transport ship will get away, and the scout cavalry will land safely, which means that, of course, uh, the scout will be able to do its primary job. However, this transport ship may go down, which is quite costly, actually. 125 wood wasted, almost, for Mr. Yo. And also, Bad Jofro here, good micromanagement, bringing down this fishing ship as he, well, tries to bring it down. I mean, the 
uh, boats from Yo here managing to do enough damage to push Badgerfro back slightly. But uh, Badgerfro slower up to the Castle Age as we've seen, and Yo now up to Castle with War Galley on the way, with Fletching on the way as well, and uh, Bodkin Arrow soon to follow, as well as the University for uh, Ballistics. These guys do not mess around with their upgrades, they are on it straight away. As soon as they get up to that next stage, they will be doing those upgrades, and as I can say, they will not be messing around at all. So Mr. Yo at the moment does have the score lead, but Bajiofro I think ahead because he is going to retake the score lead now. I believe he has more fishing ships and we'll uh, take a quick look at that real quickly. Uh, let's have a look. 20 fishing ships for Bajiofro compared to the 17 from Mr. Yo and that's almost unsurprising as Bajiofro does have the score lead there slightly. So, Badger for now Castle as well, and of course we will see uh, War Galley from him and Bodkin Arrow, which is already on the way. These guys are going to be fully upgraded very shortly, and uh, transport ship for Badgerfro as well coming up very quickly. Now, Mr. Yo looks like I saw. Hmm. I could have sworn I saw a foundation then for a uh, town center, but I must be mad. Oh, it's just the university. My bad, guys. I thought there was a town center going up there, but nope, it's a uni, and he will be getting ballistics very quickly. Now, of course, the advantage of having ballistics is that your units will um, be more accurate, and that's a huge advantage when you're going uh, in a one-on-one -on -one galley war, and it can make a real big difference. It can also make it much more difficult to micromanage, or near impossible to micromanage your army. So having ballistics is a must-have research when it comes to galley wars. And both these guys now looking like they're about to be making a move. Mr. Yo, though, dropping five villagers off on this island. And they're going to run straight into the war galleys of Bajofro. Mr. Yo may lose a couple of villagers here. Uh, but... Badger, if we're going to have to go back and focus on this war galley army from Mr. Yo on the left hand side. And Mr. Yo is going to keep his villagers alive for now as Bajofro is forced into a slight retreat on this left-hand side of the map, and Mr. Yo sticking down a dock on this center island, and I love this strategy from Mr. Yo here, because this dock will be able to reinforce the war galleys from Mr. Yo. They will be, it will be able to reinforce very quickly, and I'm just gonna turn the sound volume down slightly here, guys, it was a little bit loud in my ears. But yes, uh, the docks, on this island will of course reduce the reinforcement time that Mr. Yo has and it will also allow him to pump out more and more war galleys. Bear in mind guys that war galleys do create a lot faster than single normal galleys though they are a little bit slower on the move. Uh, that's not really a, a real problem when you both have war galleys though. So another dot going up now on the, this center area and retreat at the moment as he seems to be unable to outproduce Mr. Yo for the time being. And Mr. Yo is pushing forwards this flank, but Badgerfro coming in from the back, and it looks like he is going to be trying to catch Mr. Yo on the flank here as he brings his war galleys in at the top. But Mr. Yo's war galley will spot that, and of course, he will be fully aware of Badgerfro's attack at the front and maybe move his fishing ships out of the way. Now, the secondary advantage to having the docks on the center island along the flank is that your fishing ships can move up comfortably. Like these fishing ships now can take these fish and they don't have to go all the way back here, they just go to the forward dock and it allows them to remain fishing for much longer and be much more effective with their fishing as well. So Mr. Yoke keeping a few units back to deal with these war galleys and unfortunately for Badgiofro they've not been able to pick off any fishing ships at all for the time being but Badgiofro keeping his galley count up, managing to uh, regain some numbers here and he's starting to push back on this left hand side as well well. So of course, upgrades, they are completely even, and is that surprising? Well, <laughs> not at all. Um, there is very few upgrades, really, for the War Galley. You're just looking at the attack and range upgrades, which are the same, of course, with Fletching and Bodkin Arrow being the only ones that apply, and that's pretty much it. You could get careening, but that's pretty unusual to see, to be honest with you, and it's something that a lot of players just completely forget about or don't even bother with in many situations. And I often wonder why that is, actually. You'd think that that careening would definitely be worth it after a while. But I think the priority is going up to the Imperial Age and getting the War Galleon upgrade rather than spending that food on the careening upgrade. And there's Badgerfro clicking up to the Imperial Age now, 2% for him, and that's at 25 minutes of game time. That's incredibly fast 
when you consider how many boats they're making here as well. That's really impressive, actually. And that is mostly down to the huge amount of fishing ships that the players had in the Dark Age and that huge fish boost that they managed to pull off. So, Mr. Yo at the moment taking quite a few losses on this left hand side. Bad Jofro is going to force him back. Very nicely done. And in the meanwhile, Bad Jofro is sending some more units around at the top here to try and catch Mr. Yo's north facing docks. So, Mr. Yo also up to the Imperial Age. And surprisingly, they are very close together. Mr. Yo on 35% and Bad Jofro on 35%. Four, there is literally a single percent point in it at the moment in terms of that Imperial Age upgrade, but uh, of course, the economy that these guys are both fielding can make a very big difference. Population-wise, it is 100 for Bad Jofro and 96 for Mr. Yo, and there is very little in it at the moment. The only difference, really, is that Mr. Yo has got a TC up in the center here, though he isn't making any villagers from it at the moment. You'd think that that is maybe a slight oversight from him, and uh, making villagers here is going to be really damn useful, as that will indeed add quite a bit to his economy if he's managing to take the resources on this center island. Now, whilst there's a little bit of a lull in combat, we'll have a quick look at the center island itself and look at where the gold and um, stone positions are. Stone here at the south of this TC from Mr. Yo, and look at this, Bad Geofro sending over some units of his own to build the town center and building it directly next to Mr. Yo. He had no idea that that was there, and yet he built it directly next door. We'll have a look at his line of sight, and of course he will just spot out that uh, TC there. To be honest with you though, I don't think this is the best TC location anyway. It's kind of pointless. Uh, in the meanwhile, Badger at the top of the map, going to hit some of this stone over here which is very close to the shore and may even decide to try and take down a dock, but of course the priority at the moment is taking down his villagers. And Bad Geofro definitely seems to have a little bit of a score lead and a lead in general at the moment with more warships, I think. 55 for Bad Geofro to the 34 of Mr. Yo. Uh, Bad Geofro is massively outnumbering Mr. Yo at the moment as he pushes in from the left side and maintains control at the top of the map. Of course, Galleon coming in at 50% and uh, Bracer even at 70%. They will not be messing around or wasting any time at all in getting those upgrades done. So Bad Geofro at the moment uh, actually has um, uh, Bracer already. He has the uh, advantage here. He has the attack advantage, but he's not engaging, and I don't know why. At the bottom side, he is engaging though, but Bad Geofro is slower to get the Galleon upgrade just upgrading now and they will go toe to toe on this left side now and it looks like Mr. Yo has got the numbers advantage here but it's always difficult to tell when you're looking at stacked units that have been patrolled into action but wow Bad Geofro coming from the back with a huge number of galleons to back this one up and that's going to be incredibly difficult for Mr. Yo to hold on to when he's losing at the top as well as Bad Geofro seems to be doing Pretty good pincer movement here, and this is costing Mr. Yo considerably. 82 population for Mr. Yo, that's very, very low indeed, considering he was on 50 when he clicked up to the fuel age. So Maggiofro on 108, and he's starting to pull ahead now as he sticks up the second TC on the center island. Mr. Yo will, of course, scout that one out with those villagers. But uh, Maggiofro here with some idle villager time, not good, but starting to take a hold on the center island now as he gets that town center up. Now, I'm a little bit concerned for Mr. Yo. It's going to be very difficult for him to come back from being down so many galleys. Of course, Maggiofro can start hitting his economy from the shoreline, and he can start taking down these docks as well which is of course going to cost Mr. Yo even more in terms of uh, uh, galley production or galleon production even. So Mr. Yo has done uh, chemistry at the moment and Bad Geofro does not have chemistry on the way so that plus one attack for Mr. Yo's galleons might save him a little bit but it's still going to be very tough for him if we have a look a lot of his economy here very disrupted a lot of dead villagers as well and Mr. Yoziko in the center looking under pressure at the same time as Bad Geofro here uh, starts to take down this TC from the water and that's why I say that that TC location from Bad Geofro there was not good because built too close to the water and you will just lose your town centers to the boats and that's what it's all about on migration it's all about the boats 
So, Bagiofro got Mr. Yo cornered here. Mr. Yo, no protection at all for these fishing chips, and it's going to be an absolute massacre in the corner of the map as Mr. Yo tries to hide his fishing chips, but to no avail. And uh, Bagiofro will just start taking them down. No problem whatsoever. I mean, they are just all toast. And Mr. Yo losing population so, so rapidly here. It almost makes you wonder if a comeback is even possible. He's got to keep it on, though. He's got to keep keep it up because he cannot afford well he, he, it's not that he can't afford it I suppose he almost could afford to lose this game but he really doesn't want to lose this game I mean who in the right mind would choose to lose <laughs> wow oh the poetry is unreal I'm like just spewing rhymes left right and center nah. Anyway, uh, Bad Joe for here, taking down these center docks, which is a great, great move by him. Of course, that will reduce the production capabilities of Mr. Yo. But Mr. Yo, getting a pretty big army back up. I mean, he's investing everything he's got in these galleons, and that's all he can do at the moment. This TC is still being whittled down very, very quickly in there. Well, very slowly, in fact. It's uh, still standing, only two galleons attacking it, but it will go down eventually unless Mr. Yo does repairs there. So the problem here for Bad Jofro, I think, is that his army is quite split up, and although he has the numbers advantage, 34 warships for Yo versus the 39 for Bad Jofro, uh, even though Bad Jofro has the numbers advantage, he hasn't got his units together, and so far Mr. Yo seems to be pushing this back on the left hand side, which is a really good move by him, and uh, simply because he's been able to just mass those galleons up inside of the docks, but Mr. Yo seems to be falling apart at the edges at the moment, a lot of idle villagers, a lot of disrupted economy and of course losing all those fishing ships is less than ideal as well so we've got a real big bit of action going on in the center of the map now and it's so amazing that these players can be so fast because for me it's almost difficult to keep up with watching this as a spectator let alone actually playing and uh, having the 3000 APM that it requires to actually play at this level. It's uh, quite insane. So, Castle going up at the front for Bad Jofro here, but that was thwarted by the Watchtower from Yo. Bad Jofro building a castle behind it, and uh, this castle will of course allow him to complete this castle, but not only that, the castles will of course do increased damage against Galleons, and they will really lock down this sort of choke point, allowing Bad Jofro to perhaps even make a landing attempt on this center island, sorry, on the starting island for Mr. Yo. So, the real problem here for Mr. Yo is that he is losing map control, and it's becoming more and more difficult for him to keep the map control that he needs to be successful in this game. Now, with these castles being here, with this TC being here, it's going to be very difficult for Mr. Yo to actually... Um, take control of the rest of the island. Now, if you have a quick look at where the resources are on this map, and man, that castle from Bajofro is still not going up, actually. It's on 99%. There we go. We're just popping up. And, of course, we'll push this all the way back. But uh, the resources, the gold in the center here, well and truly on Bajofro's side of the map. Uh, a couple more relics, another gold pile on this side of the map as well. And with Bajofro locking down this choke point, Mr. Yo is not really going to be able to push this back easily, especially with only a single siege workshop here and very little military support. So it seems like Bajofro really starting to pull ahead at the moment and he is just continuing to mass those war galley or oh, those galleons up but it does seem like Mr. Yo has retaken the warship lead 36 for Bad Geofro to 43 for Mr. Yo now and that is of course all Mr. Yo has been doing for the last uh, five or ten minutes of this game just massing those galleons as best he can to try and retake some water control now the thing that I can't help but wonder is that the longer the game goes on, the center island, in my opinion, becomes more and more valuable. And the reason for that is wood. Now, boats obviously cost a lot of wood. 90 wood for a galleon, 30 gold for a galleon is quite a considerable amount. If we have a look at Bad Geofro's island here, he's got very little left. I mean, there's hardly any wood left. There's a tiny bit of wood down at the south, but that's about it. He's out of gold, and he's got to start transporting villagers over to the center island. And that takes quite a lot of time. It takes quite a lot of dedication and uh, attention to load up your transport ships and get them over there. And now you'll see that uh, Badgeover has got careening, which is, of course, plus one ship armor here, as well as Mr. Yo getting careening. And that is because it gives your 
Not only does it give your ships extra plus one defense, it also gives them extra capacity to carry units, now being able to carry ten instead of five. So being able to do that and actually getting the units across takes a considerable chunk of time and attention, and it's something that you have to do, otherwise your resources will run out on your own island, um, your starting island. So Mr. Yo now, uh, getting low on his main gold, there's hardly anything left there. Of course, he's got stone, but no other gold left here at all, and he needs to take gold in the center of the map. Mr. Yo has got a decent bank though, 900 gold in the bank is pretty substantial, and uh, that will last him a little while, but it won't last him long enough if he's not careful, because Bad Geofro here, really starting to push Mr. Yo off the center completely. I mean, another castle going up on the right side, Bad Geofro taking the wood here very comfortably, uh, even bringing in some berserks to uh, deal with these villagers here, and uh, I think this is going to get completely cleared up. Meanwhile, north of the map, Mr. Yo starting to build a town center over on this left-hand side, and he's going to try and regain some control, but it's very difficult to regain control or take control of the center island when your opponent firmly has it under their uh, influence. It is always a difficult thing to do because they will be hunting you down and if they have the advantage on the center then it can be very difficult to get a, enough of a foothold. So Mr. Yo's main gold ring out now as well and well he's still got a decent bank of gold for now but it is running out uh, quite rapidly. Now interestingly enough Bad Joe on 108 population and Mr. Yo on 113 so Mr. Yo is actually ahead population wise and that is due to these galleons here. I think he still has more. 52 warships on the water for Mr. Yo compared to the 33 of Bad Geofro, and you can tell that Bad Geofro's focus here has really switched. He's stopped that production or slowed down his galleon production and he is really really focused on getting the center under his control and building up his forces in the center by adding more and more castles and just eradicating Mr. Yo from existence on the center here, which is a very good way of doing things. So if Bad Geofro can control this uh, island completely, it doesn't really matter how many warships Mr. Yo has because Bad Geofro will be able to outproduce him eventually with the extra gold that he has and the ability to build castles on the shore to keep his docks safe. So it does become very difficult and if that were to become the situation then Mr. Yo would have to make uh, cannon galleons the standard chance at pushing uh, Bad Geofro off the center but without any gold how do you do that? You just don't. You just don't. It's very difficult. So Bad Joffre now having a pretty of an engagement at the south here. Mr. Yo, half his army seems to be split away. So this could actually go in Bad Joffre's favor down here. It is looking pretty close at the, for the time being. And Bad Joffre certainly has a little bit of a better concave. But it looks like his boats are starting to crumble at the moment. So Mr. Yo's uh, superior water firepower really coming through. And bringing him a victory here in the south. Uh, if this army does not survive, doesn't really matter because he's still got these guys up here. But at the same time, Mr. Yo may have a minor victory here taking down the galleons of Bad Geofro. But Mr. Yo has very little control of the center of the island and uh, Bad Geofro now with his fog of war on, we can see he's scouting this out with his trebuchet. He knows exactly what is up. He sees these two town centers and he is just starting to prepare for a full on land assault now with three rangers going up and of course castles here keeping good control and more docks like I said earlier in the shelter of the castles which is very nice indeed so Bad Geofro uh, doing a fantastic job so far of kind of staying in control even though he's kind of losing the water a little bit uh, for now so we'll keep an eye on Bad Geofro's point of view we'll uh, see what uh, it looks like from his perspective. Obviously, that is a pretty menacing uh, amount of uh, galleons coming to hunt him down there. Uh, getting a little bit pincered between two armies on this right-hand side. And I think uh, Bad Joffre about to lose all of his warships, actually, which is quite impressive. He's down to 24 warships now, and a bunch of them are running away as well, which is really bad, actually, for, for Bad Joffre here. And I'm just wondering where he's got 24. Maybe they're inside the docks. Yeah, they're inside the docks. All right. That makes sense. I was going to say, if these are the only warships I can see, he's definitely not got 24. But no, they're inside the docks. Not to worry. 
So uh, bad cheer for at the moment then, continuing to make archers from these ranges. We're not seeing the crossbow upgrade yet, but we will see that fairly soon. That mangonel, uh, one last shot before it dies, unfortunately. And, uh, well, Bad Jofro is still controlling the center fairly well. Now, the real question here is, will the center control be enough? Or will it be all about the galleons at the end of the day? Well, we will soon find out, I'm sure, because we're closing in at the 50-minute mark now. And uh, usually this is where things become very dicey and start to get very one-sided in migration wars. Now, usually at this stage of the game, either the fight is purely in the center or the fight is purely on the outside. And at the moment, uh, with the fight being mostly in the center, I think, obviously the Galleons here for Bad Jofro now lost. His attention is really going to be on fighting in the center. Uh, it could be very difficult for Yo, like I said, to keep a foothold here. He continues to run his villages around, continues to um, build up at different points on the center island. But he's not able to stay there long enough before Bad Geofro comes along with his trebuchet and takes them down. Uh, Bad Geofro at the moment under a little bit of pressure from the water though. And that could provide uh, a little bit of a boost to Mr. Yo. In fact, Mr. Yo taking the score lead now. And I'm starting to wonder if Mr. Yo can actually make this work out even without any center control. Now, Mr. Yo's gold down to 183. And the problem with this is that there is no trash for the water. Like I said earlier, uh, if Bad Geofro controls the gold piles, then Bad Geofro will eventually be able to come back on the water. Because uh, he can afford to make boats where Mr. Yo simply cannot. Uh, looking at the resources though, both of them with a lot of wood and very little gold for both of them at the moment. As, uh, well, Bad Jeffro is surprisingly hardly taking any gold here at all. And he is just intent in chopping the hell out of that tree. I mean, he wants that tree gone and, uh, and gone it will be. I mean, he, he absolutely destroyed that tree. Those villagers went at it like nobody's business. Um, but yeah, Mr. Yo losing more TCs and losing more control uh, of the center as this is going on. So, I mean, I would love to know what you guys think. I mean, do you think that the water control is more important here? Or do you think the center control is more important here? I think in the mid to early late game, the water control is definitely the, the place to be or the, the thing to have. But as I said earlier, I think the, as the game progresses, the center becomes more and more valuable. They're saying that Bad Jeffro is still struggling to keep his uh, uh, water population up. He's struggling to keep the galleons coming out and he still hasn't managed to uh, clean up Mr. Yo from outside of his base. So Mr. Yo at the moment, firmly with a score lead for now. Bad Jofro though, still with archers, which is quite amusing. I mean, he's in the Imperial Age, he's at 51 minutes in, and he still has archers. But not just ordinary archers, archers with plus 4 attack and plus 3 range, yes. Uh, it's quite a, kind of amusing, actually. You, you kind of just don't expect to see that kind of thing, which is kind of funny. So yeah, like I said, uh, Mr. Yo, every time he builds up, Bad Jofro just comes along with his trebuchets and deals with it, because Mr. Yo has no army support here at all. He's trying to build a bit of military up in the north though, and we've got archery ranges coming up with elite skirmishes coming out. Mr. Yo not taking any chances here with gold units. He knows gold is very scarce, and he is opting for skirmishes, which makes sense as he does have a lot of wood in the bank, which is something. But yeah, um, Mr. Yo struggling now on this right side, it seems, starting to get pushed back once again. And Bad Jofro is going to have to go against these skirmishes very soon. Bad Jofro, skirmishes of his own, and they are pretty much even in upgrades. Mr. Yo with plus one defense here, which is a slight advantage uh, over Bad Jofro. But, um, like I said about the water control, Mr. Yo seems to be making it work out. I mean, he's done a lot of damage from the water. He's preventing Bad Jofro from uh, transporting across to the center island, but that's not too much of a problem because Bad Jofro is using a lot of farms here. He still wants to get across though. You can see him trying to put those villagers in the boat. He really wants to get across to the center, but look at this. Bit of a fight going on in the center, and uh, Mr. Yo, even though he's got the hill advantage here, it looks like he will be taken down by the superior numbers of Bad Jofro. And look at this. Bad Jofro getting so cocky on this right-hand side as he just puts his trebuchets up and starts taking down this castle. Mr. Yo could totally bum rush this, uh, these trebuchets here with some villagers and uh, take them down. But Bad Jofro is going to move his army in to protect them for the time being. And I've got to say, 
Migration is certainly not one of my favourite maps. Uh, you know, it's really kind of one of those maps that simply... It can end up being a little bit of a drag, to be honest with you guys. And I hate to say it, because it's... Just one of the simple facts that migration is going to be a long game, and there's not always a whole lot of action going on, aside from these very common water wars. On the bright side though, a lot of these games have been uh, Arabia types, and they are always, always a pleasure to watch. And we'll be going into the next game fairly soon by the looks of it, because I can't imagine this game is going to be going on much longer now, as Mr. Yo uh, gets cleaned up slowly but surely, like I've been saying this, uh, this whole time. I'm going to speed things up slightly. Because uh, I want to see the conclusion of this game. Uh, Baggio Fro, sorry, Mr. Yo even, building up considerably here. More rams coming out. It looks like he really wants to um, take down these castles. And he's supporting this army with rams, which is a very good idea, considering that Baggio fields a lot of skirmishes and archers here. So, just are left to perish. The castle is gone. And Baggio it will just be successful in taking that down and uh, continuing to kill these villagers. Like, they are just so... So toast over here. This is really bad for Mr. Yo. And I'm surprised to see it fall apart for him. And oh, oh man, transport ship goes down. Many villagers lost at sea as uh, Bajofro continues to clean up these villages at the shoreline. And it seems like now it is falling apart for Mr. Yo. He is losing. Uh, he is losing it, let's be honest. He's kind of lost the water again. He's got a few galleons down here, but other than that, um, Bajofro has regained it thanks to that gold here on the center island. Mr. Yoke still out of gold as well. And there's the ram rush on the castle. And I'm surprised that Bajofro again hasn't bum rushed these rams. Uh, uh, it's really surprising he hasn't done that because they could totally just get in there and take them down. Looks like Mr. Yo will take the castle down. Bad Joe for going to let that one slide. And uh, just getting out the skirms for now. It seems like he's really not into great, well, massive military production, which he needs at the moment because Mr. Yo seems to have a larger land army for the time being. So there's another TC going up on the right side. Mr. Yo is so persistent. He really wants to get that town center up. He, he wants that so much. But it's very unlikely it'll stay up for long. And look at that. Galleons at the back cleaning up these fishing ships as well. Bad Jofro, 150 population now compared to Mr. Yo's 80. And he's almost doubling him in population. And he's got a good 1,400 points lead overall. And we're waiting to see if this push from Mr. Yo can salvage the game for him or whether it is all going to be futile. Uh, this push may not actually be that successful overall. I mean, that would be rather unfortunate if that is the case. But, uh, I mean, with the Mangonels in here, the skirmishes really don't stand up to much of a, a shot. I mean, the problem is with uh, skirmishes is that they just die so quickly to the, the Manganel shots. The only thing that Yo has helping him here are the, are the rams. They will soak up a lot of the skirmisher fire. But again, the rams are weak against the Manganels. And the Manganels may be very effective. And these guys just spazzing out on the hill there. And look at these rams. They are also weak. And even though uh, they uh, would absorb a lot of uh, skirmisher fire, the uh, Manganels did more than enough damage there to take the Rams really low on health. And uh, Mr. Yo's just struggling, it seems, to keep himself in this game as he tries to push forward here. And he's taken down, what, one archery range? But with these Manganels behind, they are way superior. And they are keeping Bajiofro well in this game at the moment. And if this Treb goes down as well, that's just going to be really a bigger loss for Mr. Yo. Trebuchet is so expensive, and uh, there's no way he's going to keep that gold coming in to afford more. Look at his resources. He's pretty much low on everything now. And uh, with nothing to counter these Manganels, Mr. Yo is going to have a very, very bad time. We're going to keep an eye on this battle here. I want to see a lot of squashed skirmishes, to be honest with you. That would be pretty fun to see. Uh, but this... This whole area now from Mr. Yo is going to slowly get taken down. His home island is surrounded as well. Uh, Mr. Yo has so little resource income at the moment. It looks like he is simply not going to keep the resources coming in to be able to afford more units. He's on 80 population and Bad Geofro on 154. Still almost double uh, that of Mr. Yo for now. And it seems to me... 
like Mistio is about to have the final nail pinned into his coffin as he tries to get out a Manganel of his own actually and that's going to be pretty effective taking down some of these skirmishers but uh, I just think that Mistio has not enough I don't know I mean it looks to me like the Manganels from or the Manganel from Bad Joe for here is going to be able to do enough damage for now and these trebuchets so many of them Bad Jofro clearly with so much more resource in this game and uh, he's just going to come forward now with these rams, with the rest of these skirms and try and finish this one off. Of course, he's going to keep sending those skirmishes in. I'm surprised really he hasn't added in more uh, archery ranges to keep production going but Bad Jofro is pretty low on food actually. He's got 800 gold though which is amazing considering that... Uh, I, if you think about it, 800 gold at this stage of the game, that's pretty nuts, and he's not really spending it apart from on Siege, which is uh, actually a pretty good place to spend it, let's be honest. More Manganels queued up, and that is just more and more death for these uh, skirmishers here. You can just see what I was talking about with these rams, they are really taking a beating from these skirmishers, and they are capable of taking 200 shots before they go down. Of course, they are finally getting taken down. Uh, just waiting for Bad Jofro to push in here with these uh, Manganels. Water control, as we said earlier, firmly in favour of Bad Jofro now. No question about that. And you might be able to hear in the background as well, Bad Jofro is seeding a ton of farms at the moment. He really is making a lot of farms at the moment as he tries to just get a little bit more food income so that he can uh, keep the skirmishes coming out consistently. But look at these Manganels here. Going to be doing huge damage to the skirmishes. And uh, one for one trades once again, but it really seems to me like that is a GG. Vestio gonna resign, and uh, Bad Jofro just way too much of a foothold on this center area, like we said earlier on. It really does come down to the center in the end game. Uh, obviously, lots more wood here, lots more gold here, space to build farms. And with Mr. Yo losing water control, Bad Jofro was able to really pressure this economy area uh, from the water. Whereas Bad Jofro was kind of left to build up at home completely fine. He was able to build up everywhere on the center. And Mr. Yo just never had that opportunity because Bad Jofro is a boss. So there you go, that's 2-1 in this best of seven series and I'll be bringing you game number four in just a moment's time. So don't go anywhere guys, uh, I will be right back with game four in just a minute.